Okay, okay, I'm about to spoil all of the Barbenheimer for you. So we start with Margot Barbie. The thing about Oppie, he always wanted to be better than Barbie. He always wanted the Barbie fame. This film is shot in a way where the close-ups are so intense and intimate that you can't help but think, is this nuclear man made of plastic? So Margot Barbie enlists the help of Killian Murphy because Iron Man stole the nukes and we gotta get the codes back. So they go on a journey to Malibu, Rhode Island. I'm seeing Oppie in 70 millimeter film format, IMAX, projected, light through film, as well as Barbie. I wonder how many nukes there are going to be in Barbie. There's a nuke in this club. Let me just paint the scene of what it was like at the theater that day. People were dressed up like full nuclear garb, like they were ready for a contamination, and a whole lot of pink. Big weekend expected at the box office between blockbuster films Barbie and Oppenheimer fans gathering at Providence IMAX at 10 o'clock this morning to experience all things Barbie's world. That's where we find it. Are you going to see Barbie first or Oppenheimer? All right, first thoughts on Oppenheimer. Really quiet during the boom, but then it got louder and leave it to an Irish Jew to show them what's up. And most of the people we spoke with today say they're excited to see both of the movies, calling it the event of the summer. Movie theater staff tell us they have been sold out all day and expect a pretty hectic night tonight. I saw so many Ryan Gosling cosplays that they had to call the cops because they thought it was an incel parade. Excuse me, 911? Are they dressed like a bunch of jokers? No! They're dressed like the notebook! There's a meat entness. It's a meat. It's a meat bird. It's almost like a berry.
I think Oppie always wanted to be Barbie. He wanted the center of attention always. He wanted to supersede the Robbie Sapir's su supremacy. The Barbie supremacy. Which actually also starred Matt Damon, too. Has anybody checked in on Matt Damon? No, 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 no. It was fun. People were dressed up. They were selling two different types of drinks. The big boy and the little Barbie. And they both had 7-Eleven slushy vibes mixed with alcohol. This is a PG-13 movie, by the way, that everybody felt the need to bring their seven-year-old daughter to. And yes, I am talking about the nuke one. I can't nuke anymore. It's a Barbie Nukenheimer. Nukenheimer Schmidt. His codes are my codes too. Well, it was interesting being at the in the crowd, seeing everybody dressed up. You know, like that kind of got me a little cheered up and hyped. That was a hype moment. God, that was a that was a hype moment for cinema goers. Yeah, just to get a little like dress up in the in the play square. Cinematography of Oppie. I'm just gonna talk about this like any, anything. I did feel like the choice to just be more close and intimate with characters during intense moments, but also just throughout the whole movie. I mean, this is an action movie about a bomb that's just all close-ups. And it's engaging because you can just see and feel so much within the depth of space they use, the framing, the out-of-focusness. It brings a real attention to detail that I feel like is very rare to see in like a very popular blockbuster in America these days. And frankly, I kind of feel like the modern directors right now, Nolan, Aronofsky, coming into their own in a way that is just like very vibrantly theirs. I feel this way even with Wes Anderson in his latest film where it's just very much like, yes, this is the type of auteur and director I am and I'm known for these stylings, but I'm showing restraint and actually going in very powerfully when needed to be in. And it makes it feel like a very fast three hours. The runtime of Oppenheimer is, frankly, I could have used a little more. And I was told that in the case of the 70 millimeter film print, that Nolan was told to cut the film by four minutes because then he would have to use an intermission to break up the projection so when you're watching it it's a completely full reel from start to finish three hours which I find to be kind of remarkable that you can watch a movie like this and still want more it's just interesting so Barbie opens up with this Kubrick 2001 reference these girls playing with dolls and then they discover Margot Barbie like a monolith and their society has changed and you know this is signified by the the girl throwing the doll up in the air and it, a very CGI doll just turning like the bone but instead of transitioning to the spaceship we just get the Barbie logo and I just kind of felt like bad taste in the mouth using a fake CGI doll to start your movie off instead of just a real one you know, this analog versus digital debate. I feel like Oppie does the analog really well because these special effects are like, they look very real. They're very just like analog, how like these like waves get recorded or like a fire or like showing the stars or a black hole and these things sinking. They're very light romantic images that don't have that like sterile, don't look at it CGI that I feel like plague a lot of movies like that Beetle trailer, for instance, where it's like the CGI is so bad that it's like the people making the CGI are just like, please don't look at this while this unimaginable thing happens. But back to Barbie, I feel like, I feel like Ken really seals the show. I feel like all his interesting scenes happen in a way where the audience can actually 
understand him and sympathize with him more whereas Barbie is just sort of this status quo character who is not really even sure if she wants to change or not or what she really wants to achieve or fulfill like this whole journey of her going to the real world and then back and then deciding to leave it in the end so she can reupholster her pussy I mean this is like actually what the plot of the movie's about she like wants to become a real thing instead of a uh, a doll I just shoved a nuke up my pussy I feel like the hype for Barbie superseded it and it became just too heavy handed at many times which wasn't that enjoyable even though I laughed a great deal of the whole movie it just felt like the oppie hype was there and then delivered the goods too Here we are, rest in peace of the jungle. 